What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. I'm here at the chalkboard today, got some colored chalk, and I'm also testing out a new microphone I bought. So hopefully the sound sounds clear and better than normal. If you notice any difference, let me know in the comments below. But today I wanna to talk about horizontal asymptotes. And this is something that we learn all the way back in algebra, even in high school we learn about horizontal asymptotes. But I think that's pretty cool because this is actually a calculus concept. So I wanna kind of relate the understanding of horizontal asymptotes, you know, our understanding of it in algebra and in pre-cal and relate it to what we learn in calculus. And I think we can make some pretty cool connections, whether you're in algebra or in calculus. But yeah, so if you know a little bit about horizontal asymptotes, then you actually know some calculus, whether you know it or not. But first, let's go ahead and break the myth that a horizontal asymptote is just a horizontal line that the function never crosses because that's just not true, right? That's not included in the definition of horizontal asymptote. It happens a lot, but it also there are cases where the function does cross. So that doesn't determine whether it's an asymptote or not. What we're talking about here is end behavior, okay? So end behavior meaning what happens at really, really large positive and negative values for x. So headed toward infinity and negative infinity, right? That's what we talk about when we talk about end behavior. And we learn this with polynomials before we get into rational functions. So with polynomials, remember, the end behavior is determined by that leading term. So when we have positive as well as an even degree, we do this negative even degree this, and then the odd degrees do this. I think there's like a dance for it, you know what I mean? But <laughs> So anyways, that's for polynomials. But when we're dealing with horizontal asymptotes, we're usually dealing with rational functions. So these are of the form where we have a polynomial over a polynomial, right? A rational function. So when we're dealing with these, as far as their end behavior, we could have a horizontal asymptote, we could even have a slant or an oblique asymptote, and we could just have no asymptote at all, right? We also can have vertical asymptotes. I'll talk about that. That needs its, We need its own video for vertical asymptotes. For now, we're talking about that end behavior. So remember, this definition for horizontal asymptote, this is what we learned in algebra. We say that if as x gets really, really big in the positive or negative direction, right? If as x, we could say, goes toward infinity or x goes toward negative infinity, right? If as that happens, the values of f of x, so these are y values, approach some fixed number l, then the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of f. This is literally the definition of the limit of a function as x goes to infinity, right? These two definitions are the exact same thing. So if you understood the idea of horizontal asymptotes in algebra and you understood the idea of end behavior and going toward infinity, right? Then you understand basic limits. Isn't that pretty cool? So if someone asks you, do you know some calculus? You can say, yes, I know calculus. I know basic limits. I think that's pretty cool. So, and again, in calculus, we know limits. So we can use this notation. If the limit of a function as x goes to infinity equals L or the limit of a function as x goes to negative infinity equals L, then the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of F. These two definitions are exactly the same, just written slightly differently, right? But they're the exact same thing. So I think that's pretty cool and we can definitely use this moving forward. And the reason why this is so important is because if you're in algebra, you can feel good because you know some calculus and you can feel good about yourself. And if you're in calculus, you can remember that, hey, when you're asked to find a limit of a function as x goes to infinity, you're just being asked to find the horizontal asymptote. So this should be something you already know how to do using our little tricks, which I'll go over here in a second. But there's no need to panic. You're just looking at the end behavior. You're looking for horizontal asymptotes, right? So let's go and look at these rules. In case you forgot them, we'll break down these rules and we'll do some examples as well. All right, guys, so let's call this function r of x a rational function, and that means it is a polynomial over a polynomial. So we'll say the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is n, and the degree of the polynomial in the denominator is m. And again, degree just means the highest power. So that leading term, whatever power that is, that's the degree of a polynomial, if you remember that from, from algebra. So there are three possible cases, okay? The degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the degrees are the same, or the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So based on which of these cases we have, we can just look at a rational function and tell whether it has a horizontal asymptote or not. And if it does, we can even tell what that horizontal asymptote is, okay? So with this first case, the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is less than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. We have a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals zero. 
The second case where the degrees are the same, our horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay, so basically a fraction with the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. If that doesn't make sense yet, we're gonna do an example, don't worry. In this last case, we have the degree of the numerator greater than the degree of the denominator, no horizontal asymptote. So it would be one thing to memorize these rules. You could just memorize these. But the thing about math is that we wanna stay away from memorizing and we wanna do the best we can to understand this intuitively. At least that's what I wanna do, right? I hate memorizing things. I'd rather understand and justify to myself why certain things, why certain rules are the way they are. That way I don't feel like I'm memorizing something. I feel like I'm gaining an understanding. I'm getting insight. I'm building mathematical intuition, right? So that's the goal of this video because you could just Google this. These rules are all over the internet. You could Google it. But hopefully through showing these examples and kind of explaining the logic, uh, I can help you understand why these rules work the way they do. So let's look at this first case where we have uh, an example like this where we have in the numerator a degree of two and the denominator a de degree of three. So the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And let's look at why we have a horizontal asymptote at the line of y equals zero. So to, to justify this best, we have to remember back to algebra when we talked about polynomials. And I talked about it even in this video with the end behavior, right? The little dance I did. So with the end behavior of polynomials, again, we're concerned with really, really big positive and negative values for x. And what we decided with the end behavior of polynomials is that it can be determined based on just that first term, that leading term, whether it's an even or odd power and whether it's positive or negative. And the reason why is because for really, really large, both positive and negative values of x, the value of the, of the expression of the polynomial and also the way the graph looks can be estimated by just the leading term. And if that doesn't make sense, let me explain it this way. There gets a certain point where these x values we can plug in get so big that the difference between x squared plus 5x plus 6 and just x squared is so insignificant that it can just be estimated by x squared. So if we think of this rational function as a polynomial over a polynomial, we can use that same logic. We can say, well, for really, really big values of x, this polynomial on the top is estimated by x squared, and the polynomial on the bottom is estimated by 2x cubed. And now we can do some simplifying and write this as 1 over 2x. And remember, these are really, really big values for x. So what is 1 over 2x going to be really close to? 0, right? 1 over 2 times some huge number. That's very, very close to 0. And the bigger x gets, both in the positive and negative direction, the bigger x gets, and the closer and closer it gets to 0. And again, this is a concept of a limit. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to use a similar logic to show... Uh, the second case where the degrees are equal. So we have degree three in the numerator and denominator. So we can go ahead and say, well, this is about, right, for really big, and I should put an asterisk around here because this isn't true for smaller values of x. The bigger x gets, the more accurate of an estimation this is, right? So I should be putting an asterisk here. I'm just kind of saving time doing that. But this can be estimated by three x cubed over two x cubed, which I can do some simplifying and write this as three over two. So does that mean no matter what I plug in for x, it equals three over two? No, that just means for very large values of x, we're pretty much three over two. It's probably very, very close, right? We can estimate what we get when we plug in very large values for x. We can estimate that with the value three over two, which is why we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients, which in this case is three over two, right? Three and two are both the leading coefficients of the numerator and denominator. So hopefully that makes sense. In this last case, we can use a, a similar logic. I can do the same thing, but we can also just kind of notice how fast these polynomials are changing, how fast they are growing, right? Because look at this numerator. We have something cubed, and then in the denominator, we have something squared. We have some stuff after that, but think about what's gonna happen as x gets bigger and bigger. Our polynomial in the numerator is gonna grow a lot faster than the polynomial in the denominator. And what happens when we have a numerator growing faster than a denominator? Well, the whole number itself is growing faster, right? So in this case, the bigger and bigger x gets, the bigger this whole value will get, which means it's not approaching some fixed number L, okay? So that's a way of thinking of these kind of more conceptually, right? The bigger and bigger x gets, the more, the more close we get to 3 over 2. You can kind of think of it that way. That's kind of how I was taught as well. Both of these work, but again, we can estimate this by... What would it be? 3x over 5 after I do that simplifying. 
which again, since X is so big and the bigger X gets, the bigger it's just going and going without bounds. So there's no horizontal asymptote, but there actually would be a slant asymptote in this case, but I'm gonna talk about that in a different video. So hopefully that explanation wasn't too crazy. Hopefully this makes some sense, but this is really useful, really, really useful to know, especially going into calculus. This isn't one of those things you learn in algebra and you're like, oh, okay, I'm done. When you go into calculus, this really helps to understand this idea of end behavior with both polynomials and with rational functions. So hopefully this video helps. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Make sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Hit like if you enjoyed, hit subscribe for more, but most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you on the next video.